everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a little makeup play date on this look here. It's a little vintage number that I came up with using only products that are Canadian owned. And this idea was inspired by one of you guys, one of my subscribers. Her name is Tammy and she was very kind enough to send over a few products as well to help me like create this video. The brands Annabelle and Marcel are two Canadian drugstore brands. So I thought that would be nice to kind of incorporate those in as well as Mac and Cover FX, which are two Canadian owned high end brand so it is a bit of a mixture of high-end and drugstore I'm sure all of my Canadian followers will be like super psyched but for those of you that aren't from Canada I hope you find the video useful anyway just to sort of see the look that I created alrighty so we're gonna start with foundation I've got a few different Canadian foundations actually I've got the Marcel flawless skin fusion foundation this is in the shade classic ivory which I think is their lightest shade it's meant to be a long wearing kind of hydrating sort of medium coverage foundation I also have the cover effects natural finish foundation this is in the shade N0 and of course I have a few MAC foundations as well my favorite being the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NW NC10 now it's actually the shade I prefer um, and I also have these cover fix custom cover drops which I kind of thought I might maybe mix in as a bit of a kind of like glowy enhancer I thought I'd show you the Marcel one in action the color of it though is a little bit on the deep side so I am just gonna mix in a small amount of the cover fix natural finish as well and as I say I'm gonna mix in just a little drop of the Custom Enhanced Drops, these are in the shade Celestial. So this will give it a really nice glow. I'm just gonna blend that in with my Ella Cosmetics sponge. My tools today are not Canadian. This is an Australian brand actually, but it's one of my favorite, favorite sponges. The Marcel foundation does have a really beautiful finish on its own. However, I did find the coverage to be possibly not quite enough for me. So I think adding in a bit of that cover fix it's given me a pretty good sort of light medium coverage. It's a nice kind of neutral undertone as well. I just love the glow that these drops give. I really need to pull this out more to mix in with foundations. I quite often use it just as a liquid highlighter, but oh, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> now for concealer, again, I have a few different options. I have a few MAC concealers, a couple. I've got the Prep and Prime Highlighter and Lights. I've got the Studio Finish Concealer in NC10. And I have the Pro Longwear Concealer. This is actually an NW15. It's the lightest shade they have. They don't unfortunately go to the 10 range in this, but I can get away with it. And I also have this concealer by the brand Annabelle, which is a drugstore brand from Canada. And this is in the shade Fair. Now I have actually tried this a few times and I wasn't the biggest fan of it. The color was passable in the shade Fair, but I just felt like the coverage just it did like nothing for me. So I wasn't actually a huge fan of that. So I think I will use my MAC ones today. So for these breakouts that I have at the moment, of my life. I'm gonna use just a little like concealer brush and you really use it for everything. It actually often lives in my handbag. For under eye concealer I'm gonna go in with my MAC Prep and Prime. This is definitely my favorite under eye concealer at the moment because it's just so lightweight. I'm not even sure if they make this color anymore. This is literally just called the shade light and I know they have like light boost or something and this radiant rose which I used to use that color a lot as well but those ones are more like correctors whereas this is like an actual concealer so possible that they've discontinued it I just want something that's nice and lightweight but actually has a bit of coverage as well it's just so beautiful for powder I realized I didn't grab out my MAC ones as well but the one I'm going to use today is by Annabelle this is the perfect matte powder so this is like just one of those sort of HD transparent powders that is pressed quite mattifying I'm only going to use this very strategically on the areas that I want to not highlight e.g. my breakouts and set that concealer in place because I have loaded up quite a bit of product and I also like to put a little bit down here on my jawline because where my violin sits this does help a bit to avoid my makeup coming off completely when I play <laughs> and then I just add a really small amount around the perimeter of my face just to kind of allow my cheek products to blend in nicely but I don't want to touch the center of my face you can see that I'm still lift that glow there because that's what I kind of want to maintain. I do have a bronzer from Annabelle which is called the Perfect Bronze. This is in the shade Sun Goddess. For me this color is just way 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 too orange um, and the product itself is quite pigmented so I find it really difficult to work with. Um, I do actually have a MAC bronzer in a palette but I think I might even just skip bronzer today. I kind of want to do a slightly more like vintagey look anyway. So I'm gonna, just gonna go straight in with blush. And I've got this MAC blush in Warm Soul. This is one of their mineralized blushes. 
it's just a really nice sort of neutral gingery peachy color it almost looks a bit bronzy so it really does help to like warm up the complexion and I am applying it in a slightly more vintage fashion where you use it kind of like contour it's sort of not done these days much like that but that's kind of the look I'm going for so I really love blush actually without bronzer because I think it can just look really fresh and then I like to go back in with my sponge as well and just bounce over that area just to kind of blend the edges in a bit more and it kind of makes it look less powdery. I like my skin to look as if it doesn't really have powder on it. So then next we've got highlighter. I've got a couple of MAC ones. My favorite MAC highlighter is the Double Gleam, as you guys know. But I also have this one from Annabelle. It's the Perfect Glow Highlighter in the shade Topaz. It is a really nice highlight but possibly not my cup of tea. I sort of said in my declutter that I might get rid of this one after I've done this video because it's just quite icy and then has a real true gold shift and I just find it to be a little bit less flattering on my skin than something like MAC Double Gleam which is a is a champagne. It just blends with my tone better but I really do want to you know show you guys this in action so and I'll just apply a little bit on the tops of my cheekbones. My skin doesn't even really need highlighter because it's so glowy. The thing with highlighters is that like a lot of them are gorgeous. This is as I say not a product that I dislike. I just prefer other ones in my collection. Just like I did with the blush, it's so important for me to go back and go over the areas that I applied that just to sort of merge the powder products in with my foundation. It's really hard to pick this up on camera and I'm looking at my face in the mirror. It almost looks like I've got really yellow toned foundation where I've put the highlight so that's kind of why this one just doesn't work for me. It just feels like it adds a real yellow cast to my skin. But for brows I have some Marcel brow products which I really really enjoy. So this is the Nano Eyebrow Liner in the shade Fair Ash Blonde. I really like the undertone of this one. It's quite sort of cool. It's very similar to like the Anastasia Brow Wears or the benefit, um, remember the name of it, but the skinny brow, it's a skinny brow pencil basically, so it's like super teeny tiny. That's why I like it, because I can get a lot of control, and the colour is just amazing. So you can see the difference between it. The colour match is just insanely good. I really, really love this Tammy. Thank you so much for sending it over. And then to set my brows, I'm just using this brow gel. This is the Marcel Perfect Brow. And this is in the shade Light to Medium. I have talked about this before actually on my channel. It's a teeny, teeny, tiny wand. And I love it because you get real precision with it. But it is one of those sort of tinted brow gels. So it'll really make your brows look nice and full. But you get a bit more control than those slightly larger brushes. Then we have eyeshadow and Tammy kindly sent over a few different Marcel eyeshadow palettes. These are like little quintets. Yeah. So there's one that's like a little bit more of a greeny kind of colorway. This one is like a smoky kind of cool toned grayish colorway and then this one is purpley. Sadly I didn't really enjoy these palettes. I felt like they were they're just really difficult to work with. The shadows were super sort of crumbly and dry in general. Some were better than others. Um, one of my favorite one actually ended up being this one which I didn't expect because it's so sort of gray. However you can make them work if you do wet your brush so I've sprayed it with a little bit of Fix Plus. But I'm going to go in with this shade here which is like a really sort of nice smoky sort of taupe shade. And you can actually do a really good like one shadow look with this. And this was one of the shades that was definitely a lot smoother than other ones. It didn't have as much sort of fallout and it blended a lot nicer. So I sort of like to pack colour on the lid. Then I'm going to go in with a tapered blending brush in that same shade and just sort of start to build up the colour through the crease. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not a completely matte shade. But I have never shied away from using satins in the crease. What we're trying to do is just blend out that shade so there's not like a harsh line. And then I've just swapped over to a slightly fluffier brush to even diffuse that further. Then I'm going to take this dark liner colour here. This is like a matte sort of dark grey. Oh actually it might have some tiny flecks of shimmer in it, but it's very subtle. And then a little pencil brush and I'm just going to line my top lash line with that because I don't actually have a liner that is Canadian. <laughs> Surprised I don't have a liner by MAC. My Zoeva Graphic Guys liner is actually nearly run out and I was thinking of maybe going and trying a MAC one. Let me know what your favourite pencil liners are in the description because I'd love to try something new. Then I'm going to apply some mascara and I have this one by Marcel which I haven't actually used before. I try and avoid opening too many mascaras at once so this is a 
first impressions. I hope I like it. It is a rubber bristle brush and I'm just going to apply to the top lashes today because I want that kind of vintage feel where all the focus is on the top lashes. It seems to be quite defining. What does this say? Fortifying and lengthening mascara. Yeah, definitely getting that. It's certainly not like hyper voluminous. But I'm thinking maybe two coats and this would probably get a little bit more volume. Wow, that's actually really great. That's two coats there. You can see how much more volume it's gotten. Better than I expected it would be, especially being a rubber bristle. I'm normally all about the natural bristle life. Now I do realize that I don't actually have any lip products other than MAC lip products that are Canadian. I was hoping to maybe go and get the Bite Beauty Latte lip gloss, I think that's the name or flat white. Um, it's one of those coffee range. I would, that would have been kind of what I'd been hoping to get, but mainly because I've been just only wearing like lip balm and lip gloss for months now. <laughs> it's definitely where I feel most comfortable at the moment with my lip products. So I was like, oh, maybe I need to go buy a Canadian lip gloss. But in the end I decided, no, I can definitely do a vintage look. Red lipstick is still something that I do love to wear. I just don't wear it as often, but when I do, I enjoy it. The one I'm going to use today is actually a limited edition lipstick from their 2017 holiday collection and this is in the shade Rouge en Snow. It is a matte lipstick and it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's been a while. I much prefer the formula of this over Ruby Woo because this is a matte lipstick but it's not a retro matte so it's a tiny bit more comfortable to wear. Alrighty, so that is the finished look. Very sort of 1940s I feel. In reality though, liquid lipsticks are so much easier to wear for bright colour. <laughs> I don't get on your teeth. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and maybe leave some ideas below for other play dates you'd like me to do. That would be kind of fun. But yeah, my next video is of course my next weekly vlog, which is very much going to be a weekend vlog because it is Friday and I have not started filming my vlog. <laughs> so it's probably going to be tomorrow. But I hope you guys enjoy that nonetheless. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.